What do Dopey, The Beast, and Walt Disney have in common? We're eating with them today. It's another episode of most popular restaurants in Disney World. Hey ma'am fam and welcome back to another episode of the most popular restaurants in Disney World, the series where I head to the most hyped up places around Disney property and let you know if they are worth the cost and worth the hype. Today we are headed to Storybook Dining with Snow White at Artist Point at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, be our guest restaurant in the Magic Kingdom, and the sci-fi dine-in restaurant over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. All three of these are incredibly themed, super popular restaurants, but which one should you go to on your next trip? Let's find out. Today's culinary adventure starts at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, where it's actually a little bit chilly and very windy, so I apologize if the mic is picking up on that. But first up, we are headed to Artist Point. Artist Point used to be a signature restaurant here at the Wilderness Lodge, classic signature restaurant, focused on those Pacific Northwestern flavors that this resort is known for. They had this incredible mushroom soup. But then, several years ago at this point, they decided to revamp it, and now it is Storybook Dining with Snow White. It's only open for dinner, and it is, as the name might suggest, a character dining experience where you get to meet some pretty rare characters. Snow White, of course, a couple of her dwarves, Dopey and Grumpy, and the Evil Queen are usually here. This is a super popular restaurant, one of the hardest reservations to get in all of Walt Disney World, because one, fun characters like I mentioned, two, only open for dinner, and three, food's pretty good for a character meal. At least it was the last time I went, so can't wait to go back. It's been quite a while. Ugh. And I love, love, love walking into this hotel. This lobby is one of my all-time favorites. It's so beautiful. We stayed here recently, so if you want a more in-depth Wilderness Lodge experience, check out that video. But is this not just gorgeous? I love it. One of the things I love about Artist Point and this hotel in general is it's just a quick boat ride away from Magic Kingdom. So this would be a great break if you're looking to get out of the heat, out of the crowds, out of the weather. Come sit down and have some really fun characters join you. Dinner starts around four o'clock, so it could be a really good late afternoon break before you head back for fireworks. All checked in for dinner. Dinner is $65 for adults, $39 for kids age three to nine. And you're gonna get a multi-course meal. You're gonna get a small sampler size of multiple appetizers. You get to choose your entree and then you get some really fun desserts as well. Always included with that are non-alcoholic, non-specialty beverages. So teas, water, soda, plus they have a full bar or you can upgrade to specialty beverages. I do love how they've transformed this restaurant to be the Enchanted Forest. And as the different characters come out and are announced, the different lights will twinkle and stuff. So it's a little fun, interactive. I also love on the table, this is for the appetizers. It's a Lazy Susan, but it is designed to spin and look like a leaf. Also, do you think Susan is offended wherever Susan is? Do you think she's mad that she She's called lazy all the time. Anyway, our server also brought us a little card. It's signed by all the characters. Um, you can get autographs. The characters are back to coming to your table. This is normal character dining, but I love that they're still handing out the cards as a little souvenir. Taking a look at the menu, of course, again, there's some specialty cocktails. There's more than that. There's all of these specialty cocktails, and our server recommended a few of them to us. And when I say our, I'm here with my friend Megan from Miss Wizarding World. She's my dining buddy sometimes, and it's really fun. Um, but go follow her for good Harry Potter, especially tips at Universal. And then also, we uh, start with the appetizers. Again, those are shared, so it's a wild mushroom bisque, hunter's pie, and a wicked shrimp cocktail. Those come out, you can add, have as many as you want, so I'm gonna have a lot of soups. Then you get to choose your entree, so they've got a beef stroganoff, the prime rib, sustainable fish, she said is salmon tonight, so you pick your entree, and then the desserts are shared as well. Grumpy, how are you? What you been up to? Yeah, life, life hard? Yeah, I know. Been working? in the mine? Oh my gosh. All day? Do you want some snacks? Do you want some food? We can share with you. Yeah, come to our table once our food comes. We don't have any food yet. But come to come back and we'll give you some. Okay, I promise. Promise. Also, as far as the characters go, one, Grumpy may surprise you, but two, Grumpy, Snow White, and Dopey will all come around to the tables. The queen, however, is the queen and she is not coming to you peasants. So our server said she was gonna bring us a, an invite from the queen for when we may greet her. After a surprise greeting with Grumpy, our cocktails arrived. I ordered the Smoky Mirror, which had quite a fun presentation and was Johnny Walker Black 12 Year Whiskey, Wildberry Lime and Rosemary Smoke. And Megan got the Enchanted Apple, which was Sky Infusion Citrus Vodka, Pucker Sour Apple Liqueur and White Cranberry Juice. 
Let's start with the bad news. I tried Megan's, which was very beautiful, but it was literally like drinking liquor sugar water. It was so not the cocktail I want. However, if you like really sweet cocktails with a little apple flavor, this is right up your alley. The smoky mirror, however, was delightful. You could really taste the whiskey, but it wasn't the same style of burning sensation as, say, an old-fashioned because of that wild berry and lime, which kind of sweetened it a little bit, balanced it out. I loved the smoke. I loved the herbaceousness of the rosemary. My favorite cocktail of all time? No, but a very fun and themed cocktail for this experience. Once upon a time, there lived a princess with skin as white as snow. Yes, snow white. She's about to begin an adventure in the enchanted forest. Oh, friends, it's time to have some fun. Everyone, follow our lead and join in the silly song. <laughs> Now let's take a closer look at those appetizers. Again, everybody gets all of them and you can ask for more of any of them should you want to. Starting with the wild mushroom bisque, it's served with a chive oil and y'all, this tiny little cauldron is simply not enough for someone who loves both soup and mushrooms. It is so good. Think cream of mushroom soup that your grandmother uses in casseroles, but elevated. I loved a little bit of zest from the chive oil. It's just earthy and delicious. I literally had like four of them throughout the meal. How are you? Good. Have you been working in the mine? Did you find any diamonds? Honored guests, <laughs> please welcome. Toby's out. <laughs> Toby's like. Dopey, I thought you were gonna get away from her, but she saw you in the end, huh? That's okay. <laughs> Hi, Dopey! Have fun in the mine! Next up, the hunter's pie, which was more like a meatball. It's made of turkey and chicken, had a cranberry preserve, and some crispy sauerkraut on top. This was my least favorite of the appetizers because the meatball itself was a little bit dry. It was very flavorful, however. I loved the tartness from the cranberry and the crunch from the sauerkraut, but this wasn't anything spectacular, IMO. And lastly, the wicked shrimp cocktail. It's served with a Bloody Mary vinaigrette, seaweed salad, and spice house made seasoning. Now, I'm not normally one for cold shrimp, but I actually really liked this. The shrimp were juicy and tender, lots of flavor. I loved the little zest from the house made seasoning. The Bloody Mary vinaigrette added a little zing as well, so it wasn't super acidic, but it also wasn't super fishy. These were very good, but none of it was as good as the soup. I love the earrings. Thank you. I wore them so that it matched your bow. I love it so much. Roosters has a little bit more extra diamond dust than mine. Yes, yes. Have you had a chance to go visit the Seven Dwarfs in the Diamond Mine? We uh, we saw Dopey and Grumpy here. Oh, you did? Yeah. Now, did Grumpy give you any smiles tonight? He tried. Just you know, a little a little, a little smirk. That's yes. all right. He's a little extra grumpier than yeah. normal today. Um, my favorite of your dwarf friends is Bashful. You love Bashful. I do. I think he's just the sweetest. Do you have a favorite? or? I could never pick a favorite. They're all so wonderful. Yeah. Now, we wanted to bring the other five here tonight, mm -hmm. but Bashful, he was just a little too shy to meet sure. everyone. And of course, if we brought Sleepy, he'd be curled up on one of these tables taking a nap right now. <laughs> For my entree, I chose the royal prime rib roast, which is served with horseradish, mashed potatoes, carrots, and a jus sauce. And I asked for it to be done medium because I normally order steaks medium well, but prime rib is a little on the fattier, chewier side, so I had to cook it a little bit longer. Also, that's what the chef recommended, which is always a good fallback. Prime rib, again, not the meal I'm normally going to order. However, it's definitely the best bang for your buck as far as this prefix cost goes because it is a huge cut of meat. And to my surprise, it was very delicious. The meat was tender. It wasn't super chewy. It was a little fatty, but that's just the nature of prime rib. Lots of good flavor in that jus as well. It wasn't dry, but the real star of the show for sure was the horseradish mashed potatoes. They were creamy, dreamy mashed potatoes with just that little zest of horseradish at the end. It wasn't overpowering. It just added enough flavor. I think this is a really good meal. Also, the popover 
was a great surprise. I thought it would be full, but it was actually kind of hollow and doughy, but it was very buttery, slightly sweet. It was a good addition to this hearty meal. I also tried Megan's A Stroll Through Nature, which is the gnocchi dish, which is made of asparagus, leeks, arugula, sage, and Parmesan. Now, there's a ton of cheese and cream on this, so I loved it. Is it as good of a deal as getting prime rib? No, but if you're a pasta lover or you're not feeling meat this night, it really is quite a tasty entree choice. There's all my friends in there. Yeah, they're in there. They're, they're very small, they're in there. They're even smaller than a dwarf, I know. I know. <laughs> it's grumpy. In addition to Snow White, Grumpy, and Dopey coming to your table, all of the characters get announced out and the lights change with whatever character they're talking about, which is really fun. Like it becomes a rainbow of gems from the mine with the dwarves. It's red for the evil queen. And then occasionally they'll come out and do the silly song where the three happy characters, not to be confused with Happy the Dwarf, come out and sing and dance, encourage you to dance along. This is kind of like when they do the birthday or celebration parade at other character meals. And lastly, as far as food goes, it was time for desserts. Now desserts are just like appetizers that they're gonna bring you out a portion for your table, but if you want more of anything, just let them know. Plus, in addition to the cute desserts on the Lazy Susan, they bring out the Hunter's Gift to the Queen, which is a chocolate served in a box that has dry ice smoke come out of it, a lot of pizzazz. It's just a piece of chocolate, like a dove piece of chocolate, but it's fun and that's what matters. As far as the main desserts go, there's the Miner's Treasures, which looks like Dopey's hat, and it's very cute. It's a cookies and cream panna cotta with some chocolate gems and little cake crumbles. You've got a fairy tale gooseberry tart and a poison apple, which is actually a dark chocolate apple mousse and a sour center. My least favorite of these, I think it was the gooseberry tart. It was an interesting flavor. Now, I'm not familiar with the gooseberry, and I do consider myself to be a goose of the silly variety, but it was a little too tart, not enough natural sweetness, and I really didn't like the meringue on top. It was too overpowering and too sweet for me, so this was a miss for me. However, the poison apple, if you are a chocolate fan, this is going to be your dream come true. Super rich, super chocolatey, definitely made me sneeze, but then it was balanced by that sour apple flavor in the middle. My favorite, however, was the Miner's Treasure. It tasted like the gray stuff at Be Our Guest. Stay tuned for more of that. Uh, nice, smooth panna cotta, and then the little chocolate rocks were delicious. Dessert, I do think, is my least favorite course. It's probably the cutest course, but I wasn't as impressed as I was with the other courses. And then, as promised, we got a royal summoning from Her Majesty and were asked to go meet the Queen. Thank you. Hello. I, I like staring at your beauty. Obviously, who doesn't? It's my favorite pastime as well. Yeah. I spend hours just staring into the mirror. As you should. I know. You look divine. There's a reason it's I who is known as the fairest one of all. Definitely not anyone else. Absolutely not. I'm glad I could be here. Too. Yeah, yeah. Clarify that for you. Yes. Um, could we take a portrait? Of me? Uh, of us? I suppose. Okay. Just wrapped up my meal at Artist Point, and I really do think that is an excellent character dining experience. I think the value of it hinges on if you care about the Snow White characters or not. Obviously, if you or no one in your party cares about meeting Snow White and the dwarfs or the evil queen, then there's no reason to come to this. But if you do like a little bit rarer characters, if you love the Snow White story, if you want to meet a villain, I think the characters are really fun. They came around multiple times, had really good character interactions with all of them, including the evil queen. I think the food is better than your average character experience. I love that the appetizers and desserts are all you care to enjoy. I love that mushroom soup so much. The entree was good. Everything I've ever had here is definitely higher than regular standard, like buffet style character dining food. So I think you're getting both the value in the food and the character experience again as long as you like the snow white characters do know it's i mean it's obviously a pricier meal all character dining is going to be on the pricier side especially since it's only available for dinner and it is a longer dining experience it took like two ish hours for the whole thing um to to finish so if you have like a tight plan or you don't want to be away for that long or something like that keep in mind it will probably take you two hours to do the whole experience from from beginning to end but i i really like artist point and i think again if you want to come to the Winter's Hodge for a break, if you love Snow White, food's good. It's definitely worth a visit. And now, it's off to Magic Kingdom. Well, now in the video, not now in life.
made my way into a very busy Magic Kingdom, specifically a very busy Fantasyland to go to restaurant number two. There are two incredibly popular restaurants here in Fantasyland, but considering I've already walked way past Cinderella Castle, you can probably guess where we're headed today, and that's Be Our Guest Restaurant. Also, I featured Cinderella's Royal Table, the restaurant with the princesses inside the castle, in another episode of this, so if you want to see a review of that, we've already got one for you. Be Our Guest Restaurant was a cornerstone of the 2012 expansion of New Fantasyland, and as the name might suggest, it's going to put you inside Beast Castle from Beauty and the Beast. And in fact, you can see it up there. It's, it's kind of far away, which is why it's so small, but we're going to head in there. Be Our Guest Restaurant, I think, is one of the most stunningly beautiful spaces, especially as someone who grew up loving Beauty and the Beast. It's absolutely amazing. It feels like you have walked inside the fairy tale. You are inside the movie. But some controversy has happened with Be Our Guest over the years. When Be Our Guest first opened for breakfast and lunch, it was a quick service restaurant and it was amazing. It was easily my favorite quick service restaurant in this park. The food was fantastic. And the dinner was a signature prefix menu. When the parks reopened after the Panini, they only reopened for lunch and dinner, and it's only that prefix menu now. So it's very expensive to eat in here, and you no longer have the less expensive, but still experience of seeing the castle when you had a quick service option. So for that reason, some people are not big fans of this restaurant anymore, but it's still one of those you gotta do at least once to see it. Let's go check out the food and, and see what it's like. I personally love going in this restaurant, but we'll see if the food's worth the high cost checked in with the friendly cast members here. They let me know that I have about 10 minutes till my name will be called. So I'm gonna go to one of my secret favorite restrooms in all of the Magic Kingdom. This one is usually not very busy and it's kind of tucked away, so let's go. This is the good stuff, friends. I know this is why you watch Mammoth Club, for these helpful food reviews and also where the best bathrooms are. So right here in New Fantasyland in Bell's Village, you've got Bonjour Village Gifts, and right there on the other side of it, you have one of my favorite sets of bathrooms in all of Magic Kingdom. They're usually quite quiet compared to the rest of the park. They're usually nice and clean. So do with this information as you will, but they're right on the other side of Gaston's Tavern. Wait a second. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? You know, admiring. What are you doing? I'm gonna eat it, be our guest. Oh, can I come? Are you sure you have time? You seem very busy. He'll still be here. Our table has been called, which means it's finally time to enter the Beast's Castle. And it is so ornate and beautiful. Like just starting with the ironwork, starting with the creatures and the gargoyles outside here. You've also got the beautiful tile work depicting the beginning of Beauty and the Beast when he turns away the old woman who turns out to be the enchantress. One of my favorite details is if you come in here into the uh, armory, the gallery of knights, they're snoring or they're talking to each other or one will sneeze also. There's a hidden Mickey on the last one on the right's uh, blade. Another cool detail, because when this was a quick service restaurant, they actually routed you through here and then into the Beast parlor room for ordering and then out into the dining room. And the crowns, light fixtures in these rooms are solo crowns. They're Belle and Beast crowns by themselves. And then when you exit the restaurant, they're stacked two on top of each other to represent that they unified. So this would be Belle's crown in here. This would be Beast's crown in here. And then when you leave, I'll show you that they're together. Is this bringing back memes? Oh, so many memories. So, in our past life as Disney cast members, Molly and I actually helped open this land after Imagineers were done constructing this, specifically Be Our Guest. Uh, so we gave tours to annual pass holders, executives, uh, and folks who were getting a preview of Be Our Guest. And a lot of really good memories here. Although this used to be where you placed orders for quick service. So. Yeah. That used to be a menu. There okay. were menus up there. But yeah, we got to do some very cool things like tour it with the Imagineers that worked on it and they showed us a bunch of details and Easter eggs. And then we got to be here when other Imagineers were oh. getting toured. Yes. Uh, we got to, like, John Lasseter came in at one point to tour it and I about died. Oh, you, you had a conniption in the lobby. Yes, it was <laughs> in the entryway. Uh, and, we, and we got to be some of the very first people in this restaurant um, before they put all the tables and chairs in and, like, it was really, really cool. That's back when they had the tile mosaic. Rip the tile mosaic. The tile mosaic. Another interesting thing about this room, this was actually the Beast's study where during dinner time in the past, after the Beast would be welcomed into your dinner, he would come here and uh, greet guests as they completed their meals. 
today during your dinner time, Beast will come around and sort of tour the restaurant. But uh, in the past, he used to actually come and hang out in here for a bit. And I think this area is absolutely beautiful, especially for a meet and greet. You have all the detail on the crest of the Beast and his family here with the rose and the Beast and the fleur de lis, the crackling fireplace, and then of course, the Beast chair, which is so interesting that it mirrors Gaston's chair in his tavern. It's just such a unique little mirror there. I mean, the chair is iconic. Cogsworth, even Cecil, you know, not the master's chair. Our three dining rooms inside Be Our Guest. There is the main ballroom, which of course looks like the ballroom where Belle and Beast have their famous dance. There's the West Wing, which is dark and spooky. And then there's a room they invented just for this building. It's called the Rose Gallery Room, the Rose Room. And it's got all these beautiful portraits of Belle and Beast's life together. And the feature of the Rose Room is this gorgeous music box that is playing songs from the film. But the music box actually was a wedding gift from Maurice, Belle's father, to Belle and Beast. And you know that because if you do Enchanted Tales with Belle, you start in Maurice's workshop and on his desk are the blueprints for the music box. Other things to note here in the restaurant is when you're in the ballroom, take a look outside. It's always snowing because it is enchanted to forever remain that evening where Belle and Beast fell in love here by dancing in the ballroom. And if you happen to look up at the cherubs on the ceiling, those are either baby pictures of the Imagineers' kids who designed this area or the Imagineers themselves as children. The Imagineers' kids designed to be our... That's amazing. Yes, they are very talented That's children. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And lastly, in the West Wing, which is probably the most popular room in the restaurant, you're going to see that the Beast has destroyed it, just like he did in the story. There's claw marks all over the place. Tapestries are fallen. The wallpaper is ruined. But take a look at that portrait of the prince, because every few minutes, thunder will clap, lightning will strike, and the portrait will transform from the prince into the Beast just for a second. So you got to pay attention. Also note, every time that happens, take a look at the Enchanted Rose, which in of itself is absolutely stunning and a feat of Imagineering. But when the thunder strikes and the beast appears, one more petal falls. And lastly, probably my favorite detail in the whole restaurant is if you listen closely, they're playing the Beauty and the Beast score throughout the restaurant, but it's in three completely unique styles. In the ballroom, it's gonna be your kind of classic score of Beauty and the Beast, absolutely stunning. But if you go into the Rose Room where the music box is playing, it's playing the music box version. And if you go into the West Wing, it's playing a little bit spookier, scarier, they've lowered the octaves. But if you walk between all three rooms, it's playing the same song at the same time. It's synced up, it's just three completely different styles. As an FYI, you can request which room you want to dine in. They can't guarantee it, but you can always ask. I would request the West Wing just because it's the coolest room. However, we requested the ballroom because the lighting would be better. Taking a look at the menu now, you may not know that you can actually drink alcohol in the sit-down restaurants only at Magic Kingdom, which was a huge controversy when it started several years ago at this point. But there is a selection of wine, beer, and other cocktails to choose from, including their own private label of champagne and wines. As far as the main meal goes, it is a $70 prefix menu for adults. That's an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. You are going to select one of each. Well, dessert kind of gets chosen for you. As far as the appetizers go, there's several salads and soups. There's also a few more unique things such as escargot or a duck and pork terrine. For entrees, there's a variety of proteins including a filet mignon, a pork chop, a chicken, a trout, as well as a plant-based squash. And for desserts, they're going to bring you out a very cute dessert trio unless you ask otherwise for dietary needs. To start, I grabbed the Be Our Guest Private Wine Sampler, which allows you to choose three out of the four private label selections, and you know I'm a sucker for any time there's a beverage I can't get anywhere else. I opted for the Enchanté Champagne Brut, the L'Ombre de Bête, nope, I didn't get that one. <laughs> I did not get Chardonnay. Who do you think I am? The Enchanté Rosé and the L'Ombre de la Beach. The Shadow of the Beast. That was a red wine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All of these, except for the champagne, are only available at Be Our Guest Restaurant. But the champagne is also available a couple other places, but only Disney places. The champagne was very, very apple -y. Like, it was being smacked in the face with a bushel of apples and a little bit of honey on the back end. But it was quite delicious, just a little sweeter than I'm used to champagne being. The rosé was perfect, very crisp, strong flavors of strawberry and cherry, not sweet at all, a little dry on the back end. But my favorite was the red wine, and I made sure to save most of it to go with my main course. It was a little bit of berry, but it was a little earthy, grassy, very full-bodied, not sweet. 
overall, I really enjoyed that they offer the sampler because, again, I love trying things that you can only get specific places. Okay. For my cocktail, I picked at the Boulevardier, which was made of Knob Creek rye whiskey, Campari, and sweet vermouth. It was also garnished with a nice cherry as well. I thought it was a really solid Boulevardier, had good rye flavor that was offset by the sweet vermouth with a little bit of that Campari so flavor as well. I really enjoyed this. For my appetizer, I went with the French onion soup, and I would like it on the record that I'm very upset the charcuterie board is gone because it was a really good sized starter. But the French onion soup is a banger. Not too salty like it can be, tons and tons of cheese. I mean, just look at that. Very flavorful, solid broth. It had that earthy beef flavor. Honestly, I think this is one of the best dishes on the menu, and it was what I would always get when this was a quick service restaurant. I would just eat this and be the happiest girl. And the appetizer to my appetizer was this bread basket. It's nothing unique, but it is a solid bread basket. Light, warm, fluffy bread, a little bit of butter. What's not to love? For my actual appetizer, I picked up the potato leek soup. This is, as the name would suggest, potato leek soup with truffle potato chips and a charred leek fondue. This had a good flavor of the leek, was very hearty because of the potato. The inclusion of the truffle chips was nice. It was a little bit of a texture change, but beware of those getting soggy the longer they sit inside the soup itself. Thankfully, I didn't let them sit there that long. For my main course, I chose the filet, which is probably the best bang for your 70 bucks. It was cooked perfectly medium rare, very tender, not chewy at all, tons of flavor on its own. But honestly, the real surprise were the mashed potatoes. They were super creamy in a garlic sauce. Green beans were solid. Honestly, this wasn't the best steak I've ever had, but it was certainly improved from the last time I was here, and it did feel like I was eating a signature level steak. And for my entree, I picked up the wine and beer braised beef short rib with smashed potatoes, smoked bacon, and an onion jam. The star of the show here was the red wine reduction. It was incredible, lightly acidic, and a great counter to the richness of the meat. The beef was tender, but it was a little dry on the outside, but more moist towards the center. The potatoes were a nice addition, especially with the small crisps on the outside, and the onion jam was simply to die for. I really think this is worthy of a signature dish, I just wish it was moist all the way through. And how cute is this dessert trio? It's made up of a raspberry macaron with lemon curd inside, the gray stuff, it's delicious I hear, in a chocolate shell, as well as a dark chocolate Grand Marnier truffle. My favorite of these was the raspberry macaron, which is probably not surprising. It wasn't the best macaron I've ever had. It's not as good as the ones in France, but the cookie was light and airy, had that authentic, naturally sweet raspberry flavor, and then I love the little tartness from the lemon. It was perfect after a heavy meal to have something light and zesty. The Grand Marnier dark chocolate truffle was incredibly rich. I mean, one bite in and it was just full of that deep chocolatey flavor with a little bit of an acidic orange addition with the Grand Marnier. I love a truffle, and this is incredibly well executed. And of course, the gray stuff was tasty. I really did enjoy the gray stuff. It had some of that light it's cookies and cream delicious. flavor, a little bit sort of like an Oreo whispered to the meringue. Um, I wish it had more of that Oreo flavor and some chunks of the cookie. I feel like the recipe might have changed since the first time I've had it. It was still tasty. I was just missing on that deeper cookies and cream flavor. Had a wonderful meal inside the ballroom, and now, as promised when you're leaving, the light fixtures are two crowns, one on top of the other, to signify the unity of Belle and the Beast. Plus, more details to look for in here. The bathroom signs are really cute. The men's room is a little knight. The ladies' room is a little princess. And then when you leave, there's another gorgeous piece of tile work. It's the final scene of Beauty and the Beast. Well, that was a lovely meal inside the castle. That was, nice. that was really nice. A lot of maps. So very many memories on that. It, it, honestly, the nostalgia wave rushed over me far more than I thought it would. Yeah, I was taking video of the music box, and I remember this time I said, Hello, ma'am, would you like me to tell you some things about the music box? And she said, I made it. Um, and then it was like, Would you like to tell me some like, things about yeah, the music you box? Tell me. She didn't. She told me about the wood they used. So it was great. Anyway, um, I honestly was impressed with the food. That was better than the last time I visited. And while I still miss that they had the quick service lunch and breakfast options, I thought the food was really good. All three of my courses, I was genuinely impressed with. I agree. The food was very tasty, but I think for me, the biggest takeaway here is the absolute beauty of the interior, the vibes of Beast Castle. In my eyes, I'd take this over Cinderella's Royal Table even. I do miss the Beast actually doing a meet and greet and being able to take your picture with the Beast. I think it's 
kind of a bummer that he just comes out and waves at you. It's cool to see him, but I do yeah. miss the actual photo op inside there. But I have to agree, especially as being a big fan of Beauty and the Beast. This is one of my favorite movies as a kid. It like it is stepping into the movie and it's absolutely stunning inside. It is a bit more expensive and it is a longer dining experience. So you are gonna be cutting out a chunk of your day in Magic Kingdom. I think for some people that's just what you're looking for, but you should be aware. So I think it's a Disney bucket list item at least once if you're a fan of Beauty and the Beast. Where are we going next? There's some new ears. Well, we better check those out. Gotta work out our stomachs a little bit before we have another course, <laughs> another restaurant. Show. Yeah, we work a, out our this is a three shopping. location show. This is only number two. <laughs> Come on. Made our way to Hollywood Studios to go to one of the most popular restaurants in this park, the Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater. Now its counterpart that is also very popular and very well themed is 50's Prime Time Cafe. But this evening, we're going to go visit the Dine-In Theater, which is themed after a 50's drive-in where your table is a car, uh, a cable, nope that's already a thing, and you get to watch some great B-grade 50 sci-fi flicks while you eat your meal. Both of these restaurants have stood the test of time. They've been open for more than 30 years and have been popular that entire time. I have lots of nostalgia for both of these restaurants, particularly sci-fi, because I remember coming as a kid, I remember coming as a teenager, and like Alan said, they've been around forever, and they're still hard to book dining reservations and hard to get tables at. In fact, when planning this video, I said, let's go to one of them, whichever one a reservation opens up first, and it was sci-fi, so there you go. We did mobile check-in and now our table is ready and I'm so excited, I literally haven't been here for years. Now walking in here is very nostalgic for me because I, again, used to come here a lot as a kid, so walking in I was hit with that like feeling of being a, a kid on vacation again. And I've always loved the theme in here. Again, it's gonna be B-50s horror sci-fi flick, so it's absolutely bonkers town, which you get to see. Uh, but you've got the different cars, which you will have to share with other people unless you're a big enough party, but each row seats too. There's also some picnic tables in the back. Those aren't as fun, obviously, sitting in the car, but you can usually get those as a walk-up if you don't have a reservation. That's always a good thing to try. There's signs all over for coming um, films to this drive-in theater. You've got the speakers around you, and the vibe in here is really fun. At the Sci-Fi Dine-In, the menu matches the theme of a uh, drive-in, so you're going to find appetizers like onion rings or fried pickles. And while there are entrees like pasta and salad, what it really centers around are their burgers, and they do have a variety. And for dessert, while they have hot fudge sundaes and cheesecake, you have to get one of their milkshakes, which is what they're most known for. First up, we started with the fried dill pickles that come with ranch and a horseradish dipping sauce. I gotta say, I like these dill pickles a lot. They weren't super greasy, which is always a worry with fried dill pickles. Had good dill flavor, still had the crunch of the pickle, and that horseradish dipping sauce was incredible. I mean, you do have to like horseradish for it, but I really enjoyed this. For our shake, we split the Oreo cookie, a classic flavor. And now while it was delicious, let me start by saying it wasn't really a milkshake. It was more like soft serve with Oreos on top. I couldn't even get it up through the straw, which it was a paper straw, which is its own issue, but it was much too thick to actually drink. It was delicious though. I mean, it's Oreos, what's not to like? And also as it melted a little bit, it became very drinkable. And I picked up the feature film burger, which is a seasonal burger that rotates. And this time it was a signature beef burger with their house made seasoning on a brioche bun with shaved pastrami on top and some pepper jack cheese with a Carolina mustard sauce. I thought this was pretty good. It was very hearty. I liked that I could actually taste the pastrami. And then the spice of the pepper jack helped even out the whole dish because it is a pretty fatty, heavy dish. I thought it was enjoyable. Not Certainly not the best burger I've ever had. I actually think Deluxe Burgers burgers are better, but I liked that it was unique and a made to order burger.
For my entree, I went for the classic American burger, which is a signature blend of beef with a house-made burger sauce, applewood smoked bacon, American cheese, shredded lettuce, and an heirloom tomato served on a brioche bun. Now, you can swap French fries that come with your burger for onion rings for a small fee, but pixie dust was on my side because they ended up bringing me both the onion rings are quite tasty they're probably my favorite thing i had this whole meal they were crispity crunchy on the outside but yet there still was that good onion flavor inside it wasn't just all batter the burger was fine on its own certainly not a 23 dollars burger but the patty was cooked well it had nice fresh toppings my main complaint is that the burger was very very juicy which is a good thing but it like bled through the bun so that made it really hard to eat again it's a classic burger you're not gonna be upset you eat it but it's also not gonna be the best burger you ever have Well, that was Sci-Fi Dino. It was very nostalgic for me going in there. I immediately had a big smile on my face because I felt like a little kid because I loved coming here when I was younger. Um, and I love some of the commercials. I love when Walt Disney shows up. I love the intermission songs. Uh, the hot dog jumping into the bun didn't happen, which was a little sad. Uh, but my new favorite cartoon is this one where the hot secretary gets captured by aliens. Uh -huh. And then she fights off the aliens and becomes a superhero in the process. Uh -huh. And then she comes back and her dumb man boss is like, aliens don't exist and then the aliens kill him. The food was okay. It, uh, it's gonna be better than most quick service burgers or quick service food you're going to get, but it isn't going to beat the likes of something like a deluxe burger at Disney Springs though. Yeah, that's definitely true. Backlot Express is right here. It's kind of your burger joint here. I would say it's definitely better than that, but it's also yeah. twice as expensive as a burger from somewhere like that. So this is a restaurant where I truly think you're paying for the ambiance, you're paying for the experience. Absolutely. The food is good. Uh, it's fine. It's just not yeah. amazing. But I like going in there and in a park full of bangers and heavy hitter attractions where there's line after line after line. Maybe you're stacking lightning lanes. This, you know, sometimes people want to do a sit down meal in these in this park um, to kind of break up all of that. And sci-fi is fun. It's, it's a fun restaurant, but it, it's definitely my least favorite food I had throughout this video. Well, that brings us to an end of this episode of the most popular restaurants in Walt Disney World. We've done this a couple other times. We've reviewed restaurants like Cinderella's Royal Table, Ohana, Topolino's Terrace, done a quick service version, done a universal version, but we are always looking to review more of the most hyped up and popular restaurants. So let us know where we should go for the next one. Until next time, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to join in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, please join us on Discord. Links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been quite delicious, I would say. Oh yeah, on the whole. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty that, tasty. Then, you know, the alien commercials though. I like the alien commercials. The yeah. burger wasn't my favorite, but you know what? The aliens are always fun. So. They made up for it. It's a good one. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.